Democratic Alliance interim leader John Steenhuisen has distanced himself from claims made by the party's federal council chairperson Helen Ziller that democracy resulted in more racism in South Africa than apartheid. On Tuesday, Ziller tweeted that the democratic era had delivered more racist laws than apartheid. The leader of the official opposition says Ziller's claim is false and that she has referred herself to the party's disciplinary structure. But Stian Hazen added that while Zilla's claim is untrue, it is becoming apparent that some people in South Africa are being made to feel unwelcome. He said the recent court judgment upholding the government's decision to distribute COVID-19 financial relief based on race is proof of that. Now let's discuss this further with our reporter Nicholas Bauer, who joins us for more on this. A good afternoon to you, Nicholas. Now, give us yes, this, good afternoon to you, Tommy. Perhaps let's backtrack a, a little bit. Uh, yesterday, Helen Ziller once again uh, was trending on Twitter with the statement uh, that she made. Um, give us a little bit of background and what it is that led to her making the statements that there are more oppressive laws uh, now in, in post-democracy uh, South Africa than there were during the apartheid era. Well, Tommy, I'm not too sure what precipitated the tour that uh, Helen Ziller was engaging uh, in uh, on the social media platform earlier on in the week. Um, we need to just be honest and say that Helen Ziller is not a stranger to controversy when it comes to social media uh, or indeed um, making very, very controversial statements online. Uh, from what I can see, the person that she actually made these, these comments to is just a, a sort of run-of-the-mill Twitter user, not a, a public figure, not a, a DA political figure, not even a... Um, a political, any political party figure, really. Um, and essentially, um, it resulted in the furore that we're seeing now. Um, there's a number of prominent DA, uh, black DA leaders that have come out on Twitter as well to express their dismay uh, at the handling of the matter thus far. I've been trying to get a hold of uh, the uh, um, other uh, the DA leader that's trying to vie for, for the leader of the party in Bali and Tuli. Um, a member of the provincial legislature in Kwazulu Natal. She's not commenting. Uh, also, another very, very vocal uh, person on this matter has been Pumzile van Dam. She's not granting any interviews. I did manage to catch up with John Moody. He's the leader of the DA in Gauteng. And he's very unequivocal of this, saying that uh, Helen Ziller uh, really doesn't understand the magnitude of her statements when she makes statements like this, uh, dredging up a very, very painful past that South Africa is not properly dealing with. But uh, for, for lack of a better um, explanation here, I mean, Helen Ziller runs the risk of doing some very, very serious damage to the DA's image um, and also their attempts to, to give an unequivocal stance on not only race relations in South Africa, but also in terms of political redress as well. And, and, he also, and she also spoke about victimhood um, in her tweet, saying that victimhood just seems to be uh, perpetuating. And, and while you answer that, you know, some people expected that John Steenhuisen perhaps might support Helen Ziller. Uh, give us your view on that and, and just your, your take on John Steenhuisen's response. Oh, look, I, I appreciate the fact that Sten Hazen um, is in a very uh, sensitive position. As interim leader of the DA, uh, one has to look at how he got into the position in the first place. Uh, when Musi Maimani made that very, very public and significant resignation uh, from his position as DA leader, um, uh, John Sten Hazen immediately took up leader of uh, the Parliamentary Caucus and very soon after that was voted in as part of uh, the DA's federal executive to be the interim leader. Uh, and the initial sort of idea that one would have is that John Stenehazen is trying to keep Helen Ziller on side. Um, not only is she a former leader of the Democratic Alliance, she is uh, the, uh, the chair of the federal executive. Um, if you want to compare it to perhaps the ANC, I mean, it's akin to um, the secretary general position. Uh, essentially, Helen Ziller runs the party machinery. Uh, and as such, many have described her as the second in charge of the Democratic Alliance. Um, with that in mind, one would expect that John Stenhazen would need to trade very carefully. That being said, you speak to some uh, an analysts um, who are very well versed in politics within the DA and say that it's, it's, it's quite understandable for John Stenhazen to do something like this. It's in his nature, uh, as it were, 
to try and not make any waves. Um, we do need to remember, though, that this is a year in which the DA, the Democratic Alliance, is going to choose a leader at a Congress. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it looks as though that Congress, Congress is going to be held digitally, not too sure exactly when. Um, but at this point in time, uh, should the DA really be grappling with debates about uh, the legalities of apartheid as, uh, in, in comparison to the legalities of uh, the democratic era and, and which uh, era has uh, delivered uh, more racist legislation seems like a pretty black and white issue, pardon the pun for me. Uh, apartheid declared by the United Nations as a crime against humanity. Surely one would be working from the departure point that uh, apartheid was far more racist than anything that has been delivered by the democratic era. But we'll be monitoring that story throughout the day. Uh, and uh, we're due to speak to hopefully another uh, leader in the DA and some expert analysis from DA Insiders as, uh, as well that I'll hopefully include in my package. Now, Nicholas, this is obviously not the first time um, Helen Ziller is, is known to be involved in these type of, of racist tours. Do these have any sort of reputational damage for the DA as far as their black constituency is, is concerned? Uh, it's a difficult question for me to answer uh, as a uh, white South African. I, I'm, I don't pretend to speak to uh, speak for for um, the voting constituency of, of voting constituency of Black South Africa, but I can only imagine you're know, speaking to even just um, social media analysts and uh, people that look at the public relations of political parties. Uh, it would seem that Helen Ziller is becoming a electoral liability for the DA if it wishes to grow its support in uh, the uh, black constituency of South Africa. I can't imagine uh, anybody really um, thinking that the uh, DA wants to embrace non-racialism and wants to move forward uh, and build a more unified South Africa if they're still busy having a debate around uh, apartheid and um, how evil it was. Um, so I can only imagine that this is is something that should be concern for the DA moving forward. And if it wants to uh, deal with the actual matters of the day, how government is, is dealing with the COVID-19 response, certainly having to put out a fire that their second in charge, Helen Ziller, has erupted and engulfed uh, the party in on Twitter, uh, shouldn't be the way to go about doing so. Well, thank you so much for that, Nicholas. That's uh, Nicholas Bauer, our reporter there, who is going to be following up on that DA story.